Hi, I'm Cal McAlexander, and I'm the Executive Director of the Chaplaincy Endorsement Commission for the Christian Churches and Churches of Christ. I've been asked to bring the communion meditation this morning. I'd like to show with you a story about Suzanne and her daughter Gay, who were caught up in an Armenian earthquake a few decades ago. The earthquake struck when they were on the sixth floor apartment of an eight floor apartment building. The building collapsed and they were, if you were, entombed in what Suzanne described as a six foot by eight foot by three foot uh, enclosure. They waited for rescue, but as the time passed, Suzanne's daughter, Gay, began to cry about being thirsty. Mommy, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty. Suzanne groped around in the darkness and finally found a jar of grape jelly. She opened the jar, stuck her finger in, and gave her daughter something to quench her thirst. A few hours later, the same thing. Mommy, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty. And Suzanne opened the jar and gave her daughter something to quench her thirst. Sometime during what Suzanne believes this is the second day of their three-day ordeal, the jelly ran out. But the cries continued. Mommy, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty. Suzanne wanted desperately for her daughter to survive, and she racked her brain trying to think of something she could give her daughter. And finally she remembered she had her own blood. So she took the jelly jar, broke it, took a piece of the broken glass, cut her hand, and gave her daughter something to drink. Time after time, over the ensuing hours, the cry would come, Mommy, I'm thirsty, I'm so thirsty. And Suzanne would cut her hand and give her daughter something to drink. Max Licato shares his take from this story, and I'd like to share it with you. And we, too, are very thirsty. We're not thirsty for fame, possessions, passion, or romance. We drank from those pools. They are salt water in the desert. They don't quench. They kill. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Righteousness. That's it. That's what we are thirsty for. We're thirsty for a clean conscience. We crave a clean slate. We yearn for a fresh start. We pray for a hand which will enter the dark cavern of our world and do for us the one thing that we can't do for ourselves. Make us right again. Mommy, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty, Gay begged. It was then I remembered I had my own blood, Susanna said. The hand was cut. The blood was poured, and the child was saved. God, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty, we pray. It is my blood, the blood of the new agreement, Jesus stated, shed to set many free from their sins. And the hand was pierced, and the blood was poured, and the children are saved. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time that we can remember your broken body and your spilled blood, the sacrifice that you made on the cross for us to take away not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. We thank you. We praise you for that sacrifice. And we give all the glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hi, for our offering meditation, I'd just like to share a few things about the Chaplaincy Endorsement Commission. Our chaplains are serving in all kinds of areas all over the world. We have military chaplains, police, fire department, hospital, hospice, prison, and jail chaplains, Civil Air Patrol. They're serving in the VA and doing great things for our people. One thing that I'd like to challenge you with is that we now have 225 chaplains endorsed. And if you're interested in return on your investment dollar, there's no better deal than the Chaplaincy Endorsement Commission. For the price of one chaplain, one salary, and one set of expenses, you receive 225 chaplains whose salaries are paid for by the military or by the institution. There's no better deal than having uh, our folks being paid by the military or the institution. The other dynamic is during this time of the pandemic, our chaplains are extremely important. They are ministering not only to victims of this pandemic, but the first responders, the healthcare workers, and those that are caring for our people. And that will just continue and perhaps intensify after the pandemic passes. You see, many of our healthcare workers and first responders will be struggling with what in the military we called combat stress or operational stress. And more and more evidence is forthcoming that it's actually the chaplain that is best equipped to help them through these difficult times and to bring them into full functionality again. So the chaplains are one of the best opportunities you have to use your mission dollars to further the kingdom of God and to minister our people. May God bless you as you decide how to use your mission dollar. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to give back to the kingdom. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given us pray for those that are struggling financially and that you would minister to them. Bless these gifts to the furtherment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray.